Hi there, my friends. So let's have a brief um, mini lesson or a brief lesson on your benchmark for this week. We are in Unit 7, Week 2, so we'll go over the skills. We'll do a little shared reading, and then you will be off to complete some assignments, okay? The good thing about this is it's a video, so if you need to go back and reread or check over something that we reviewed, you can do that. You can hit rewind, you can pause as needed, take breaks if you have to. So let's begin. Just like we would on the first day of a new week in our classroom, we go over our skills and our essential question, okay? We're talking about investigating the past, right? So we're in Unit 7. This is Week 2. These are some of the vocabulary words I want you to look for in our reading. Artifacts, primary, record, research, captured. So I want you to be on the hunt for these words. And when you find these words, I want you to make some annotations. Find out, it tells you what page they're in, but I want you to find out what's the sentence the word was used in, and then I want you to explain to me your understanding of those words, okay? Let's see what else. Then we have formal and informal. This is in reference to language. We've had discussions about this before, remember? Formal use of language, kind of like fancy talk or the way we would write, and then informal language. And we've used, um, we use that more as expressional. Like if we say, oh, that was so cool. Well, maybe we mean it was so cool because it was awesome or we enjoyed it, not because the temperature was low. Then we have our high frequency words. Read them with me. Almost. I. Animal. Form. Around. High body, light, color, story. Remember, our high frequency words are the words that we are supposed to be able to read fluently and quickly, not having to sound them out. And our spelling words, and our focus for this week is inflectional endings with spelling changes. So the root word of our first word, the root word would be hop. The spelling word is hopped. Then we have liked. The root word is like. Making. The root word is make. Raked. Root word is rake. Running. And the root word is run. Sitting, the root word, very good, sit. Smiled, the root word is smile. Swimming, the root word is swim. Taking, the root word is take. And using, the root word is use. So I want you to practice these words. You are going to have an activity within our Google Classroom that will be on Spelling City, and then you have another one that you will do on um, a Quizlet. And that one, I would wait to the very end because you are going to take a test, and then you have to message me and tell me what your score was. So I really hope you get 100 because I'm going to be counting how many Smarties I have to give out when we return. All right. Let's see what's next. It's our introduction. So these are our objectives. These are our I cans. We're going to be focusing on being able to reflect on strategies to help us read informational text. What's informational text again? That's right, nonfiction, stories that have facts. So I want you this week 
everything we read, I want you to be my fact finder. Even if it's not something in our Google Classroom, if you're out and about with mom or dad, or you're with your brother or sister, or you're with somebody else and you're looking at something, I want you to think, is that something that's nonfiction? Is that informational? You will be my little fact finder this week, okay? I can't wait to hear what you find. So we're going to do our read alouds here in just a moment. We're going to be reading informational texts about the past. And we are going to focus on reading with fluency, accuracy, self-correcting. That means what? Using our word attack strategies, right? We'll sound things out and we'll work really hard. Okay? Then we have different mini lessons. Remember, always annotating. So you can take annotations down in your literacy journal, your green literacy journal. That's what you're going to be using for your ELA work, green literacy journal. Okay. And we will be working on writing informational reports. And then we're going to focus on our phonics and our word study, inflectional endings, blended words. All right, high frequency words and reviewing other words. Okay, and then this activity is in our Google Classroom. You will complete this before you do um, the read aloud. So our shared reading is about to begin. What I want you to do right now is pause and complete this activity. So I'm going to pause and wait for you to return. And when you return, you will begin your shared reading with me. Welcome back. Did you finish that activity? I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you were able to activate some prior knowledge and make some connections, maybe connections to another text, maybe a connection to yourself, or maybe a connection to the world, just like we've discussed in class before, right? So right now, we are going to focus on reading A Gift to America. This will be our shared read for me and you. You can follow along as I read it. What I want you to do, remember I asked you to be my fact finder, so you are going to find the facts from our reading and you're going to write them in our Google Classroom in the comments. Okay? A Gift to America. On July 4th, 1884, France gave the Statue of Liberty to America. It was a birthday gift. The idea for this statue came from a dinner party in Paris, 1865. As people discussed democracy, they wanted to honor America. A sculptor planned a woman for the statue. The woman would hold a torch to represent the freedom of democracy. Today, Lady Liberty stands guard over New York Harbor. She continues to light the doorway to America, welcoming people to her shore. You know what? I found some vocabulary words while I was reading, and I would like you to go on a hunt for these vocabulary words. I also found some facts, and since you're my fact finder this week, I know you'll be able to write and respond in our Google Classroom. I also want you to find, using dictionary.com, you're going to find what democracy means. Okay, you're going to find the meaning of the word sculptor. You could look up statue, but definitely sculptor and definitely democracy. Okay, and then we're going to have a little bit more of a discussion about the New York Harbor. I'm so excited because you know this is my hometown, so I can't wait for you to learn a little bit about where I'm from. Of course, I wasn't around in 1865, but we can talk about that later. 
All right, so we are going to pause here one more time. You are going to complete your fact finder activity and you are going to complete your vocabulary activity from A Gift to America. When you finish that, you will come back and you will read in the British Museum. This one you will read by yourself, but you will do the same thing. Now I want you to look at the difference, okay? A Gift to America was informational social studies. But in the British, British Museum, it's an end rhyme poem. So remember how we do these in class? Find all of the rhyming words for me and make a list. Can't wait to see what you come up with. Okay. So we're going to pause here again. You're going to complete those activities and then you will come back for the end of this video. All right, you're back. Let's take a look at this. This is our building knowledge. This is the build, reflect, write. Sometimes this is in your book, but I want to go over primary sources. What is a primary source? Okay, so let's talk about this because we're going to need all of this information when we do our writing an informational report. A primary source comes from someone who lived through and actually experienced events. Guess what? You just became a primary source. One day, somebody's going to have questions about coronavirus and you will be a primary source. You will be able to discuss what happened during this time in history. It's not history right now because we're living it, right? But one day you might be a mommy or a daddy or a grandma or a grandpa. And you might have someone ask you, hey, long time ago, there was this thing called coronavirus. And you're going to be able to say, oh, I know all about that. I lived during that time. You just became a primary source. Isn't that cool? All right. So here they talk about how to interview primary sources and conclusions that you could draw from a primary source. And why do people study primary sources? So I want you to take a moment and look this over. Primary sources can be writings, interviews, letters, pictures, or artifacts. And is a primary source a person who's being interviewed? What do you think? Yes. If I interview you about homeschooling during coronavirus, are you a primary source for my interview? Yes, you are. So we're going to talk more about this as the week goes on. And I'm pretty excited because this is... We just made a connection. Oh my goodness. We just made a connection. We made a connect to self and a connect to world. All right, my friends, go finish your work and we will meet again.